What up, world? It's the Big Fact Show. It's your boy, Mark Waldo Ward. I got a special guest with me tonight. I got his screw face, uh, just a straight up Indiana legend, um, part of a, a, an incredibly influential group, MCGs, still making hit music to this day, um, overseeing his son's career, who's doing big things. How you doing tonight, sir? Man, I'm good, man, man. I'm grateful to be on the show, man. Appreciate you reaching out to me, brother. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Shit, it's definitely an honor to have you. I mean, shit, I guess let, let, let's get started in the present. Um, I, I, I know you're always releasing music. What, 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 do you got, what are you pushing right now? Right now we're pushing um, the Like Father, Like Son 2 uh, project. We released uh, back in like the end of July. So we've been running with that, you know what I'm saying, uh, pushing that, you know, for the remainder of the year, gearing up for some new stuff for 2021. And and that's with your son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and little Cappy, man. Uh, that's the uh, second one. Like I said, like father, like son, too. We got a little series. We probably gonna do a three, and then you know move on from there. But, and and, yeah. and you kind of raised them. Let, let's not say in the industry, but you kind of raised them in, in in the craft of musician mus, musicianship. Oh yeah, no doubt. Uh, the first time I took him in the studio with me and let him get out on the record, he was like six years old. So, you know, he been he been into it ever since. So what what's it like when, when, while you're making records with him, do you have to step out of the father role and treat him as an equal? Are you all the way in charge of what's going on? How, how, what's the dynamic with that? Oh, no, nah, man. Uh, he 22 years old now, so he grown. So, you know, um, and you know he know, you know what he doing. Like he know what he want to do. He got his sound, and you know uh, I just let him do him, man. I think we complement each other when we when we. Work he he don't, he don't sound like you, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. He got his own, you know, own identity. He know how he coming. You know, he make his own beats uh, for the most part and everything. So, you know, I treat him just like you know any other artist when I'm in the studio with him. You know, you, you had some uh pretty big albums in your career where he, he had beat placements where he must have been like around like 12 or 14 and it was a nepotism. Like those beats belong there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 no doubt. They was they was they was right there, you know what I'm saying? Uh the same level with everybody else that produced on those projects. So I had to use it. So how, how what do you think you got on the horizon as far as a solo solo project? Uh, solo man be looking out uh, the beginning of 2021. Um, my new album called OG. I'm like 90% done with it. I'm I'm planning on having it ready for uh, my birthday, which is uh, January 28th. So somewhere around my birthday, I'm planning on dropping. You know, you you, you kind of uh, evolve. What is is there going to be anything like like any different angles that's going to be on this project? I mean, basically, this project right here, man, um, it just basically, man, uh, it's more like focus on on my growth in the game and where I'm at, you know, um, as far as like uh, like a lot of the a lot of the young cats from the area and stuff, you know, they look up to me for advice and you know stuff like that. So I'm just like really, I'm just really like on my OG shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's gonna be dope, man. So, and the reason yeah. they look up to, for, to you for advice is basically y y your group was the the first rap group in Indiana, or at least with notable success, right? Well, I wouldn't say the first rap group in Indiana with not notable success, but we was one of the first. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's the MCGs, right? Yeah, the MCGs. We was definitely one of the first. Uh, to do it. It was a couple more groups that was like in that same that same era and around that same time. But we was definitely one of the top pioneers uh, to, you know, put Indiana on the map. You know what I'm saying? How about specifically Gary? I spe definitely specifically Gary, Indiana. I mean, we called the murder capital gangsters. And that was when Gary was the murder capital. So, you know, we definitely was on that. You know what I'm saying? On our gangster island. GI two one nine thing, you feel me? And you, 
one, I mean, I, I know the whole body of works well regarded, but you have one project in particular, the MCGs, that's this considered a classic. And I know it's when, if you look it up on Disc, Discogs, uh, it goes for a pretty hefty price if somebody has a copy of it. Are you talking about uh, 53 Chambers of Danger? Yep, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't see that thing, man. Some people selling that thing for like $100 on some sites. I'm like, man, I'm about to uh, track them down and get a little cut. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shit, just, just drop a run of 200 real quick. Listen to I mean, I got, them, I got them on my website, bro, for like $10. I still got a gang of those CDs, man. I hear like, like when I first, when I first, uh, Put that record out, man. I grabbed about, I don't know, uh, out the gate. I think I had like uh, 14,000 units. And uh, I almost sold most of those. And I went back and I got like 20,000 units. And it kind of slowed down. So I still got like maybe a few thousand. They going here and there, you know, still to this day. You know what I'm saying? What's the website? So, some, so anybody who's interested can get them. Um, it's a uh, hit screw face dot big cartel dot com. If anybody familiar with big cartel, I know a lot of y'all are. You just go there and you know put hit screw face h i t s k r e w f a c e dot big cartel dot com, and you can get like uh, all of the stuff that I have on hard copy. You can get uh, you got them crumbs. solid. You got them solid shirts on there, right? Yeah, super solid gear. That's why I was just about to say you can get the brand, the clothing brand, super solid gear on there. Uh, we got hoodies, uh, t-shirts, scullies, masks. Uh, we about to come with jogging suits. We got a uh, uh, crew neck sweatshirts. You know, gang of stuff. So you know, check us and, out. And, and, and super solid is because you. And, 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 in music and in, in Gary, you're known as being super solid. Oh yeah, no doubt, man. I always been hundred grand, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, you know, I don't really have to say that because people would tell you that they self, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I've heard it many, many, many times. Yeah, so, you know, that's something that, you know, I'm proud of and something that I stand on is just, you know, being a solid individual, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, keeping my word, oh, yeah. I mean, that's all you got out here is, is, is your balls and your words. So, you know, I was raised like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm standing on that. And, you, you know, I, I'm more than a decade in with dealing with all levels of people from, you know, people that shouldn't be rapping to people who are touring the country. And uh, you, you, you probably got about the most impeccable record of doing what you said you're going to do of anybody I've ever met. Man, hey, man, I appreciate that, bro, for real. Man, I'm, it's a the, you know you know I, I was raised on tell you know sh tell the truth shame the devil right real talk man you know that's that's what it's all about you know what I'm saying uh, I I say you know give people their roses while they heal you know what I'm saying and, and, and with with that being said you always been solid with me you know what I'm saying so salute to you yes sir appreciate that while we talking about being solid m most of your career has been self financed huh oh yeah. Most definitely, man. I, I, at the beginning of our career, um, before the 53 Chambers, like the stuff that we was doing before that, like we were dealing with different management companies and a little record label. They gave us a little bread. But since the 53, 53 Chambers on out, it's been all me. I took, you know, what they gave us and, and I, 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 you know, invested it and saved and I knew that one day we was going, you know, eventually get out of the contract. They weren't doing everything they were supposed to do. And I was just making sure that I had my money ready for the time. And yeah, it's so, been on so, ever since. I, I, I know you, so, you sold mad copies of shit, even, even back to cassette tapes. Has streaming been beneficial for you or has, has it, how, how has it affected you? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I made more money in the uh, physical CD era. Uh, as far as uh, record sales or, you know, stream money or any of that. But the thing about streaming that helps is, uh, I could say you could get it, the, the way the internet is now, it's easier to get it out to the masses more. I could say that, but the, 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 the money that you get 
for streaming is nowhere near the money that you get for selling physical copies. Because, I mean, it would be like nothing for you. Like, I, I know you performed in Indianapolis quite frequently. It would be nothing for you to, like, sell 500, 1,000, 1,500 copies of CDs at a show. And, like, what, what you pay to have all those pressed up, like, like 250, 300 all at, at, at the most? Probably something around that. And I could still get, you know, $10 for them. You know yeah. And, and then maybe 20 of you autograph it or some shit and everything. No doubt. No doubt. No yeah. Doubt. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm sure there was a way around it. I see Cappy's streaming numbers are pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah. He getting up there, man. But like I said, man, you need like a million streams or something to like get a real nice check. So you know what I'm saying? Versus uh, selling a thousand CDs and, and making ten bands, like you know what I'm saying, in one night or in a month or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, well, what? How do you? How would you compare? Not how would you compare, but do you see the advantages that he has at, at, at 22 that you didn't have as a musician? Oh, yeah. He definitely have a lot of uh, advantages that I didn't have. For one, um, <clears throat> we didn't even, like, when we first started, man, we didn't even have studios in our area. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had to, uh, like, hustle up money. You had the first, it. did you have the first studio? Did I have the first studio in Gary? Yeah. Nah, I didn't, I didn't have the first studio in Gary, man. Like I said, it was a, a record label that I was with. Uh, they was like one of the first people to have a, a studio that everybody could come to and, and, and book studio time and all that. But we did help to hustle up the money to get the, the uh, studio. So you can, in a sense, say that. You know what I'm saying? We ran you, the studio. You, 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 you're a part of, it, of the creation of its existence. Yes, sir. Got you. And, and you still friends with a lot of these people, to, a lot of those people to this day, huh? Yeah, a few of them, yeah. I ain't going to say a lot. A few. You know you know how this music game is, man. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of emotion in this. And, uh, you know, a lot of people that, you know, try to get over on you over the years and, you know, you still so, cool? You still cool with Young Platt? Oh yeah, Young Platt, that's my homie right there for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like by the time Platt came in to the screw face fold, um, and, and started working with me like that, I had my own studio out in Indianapolis by that time. And, you know, we we yeah, we did a lot of stuff. So yeah, that's my homie. I I I I love Platt's music. Yeah, man. I'm trying to get him to, you know, get back all the way into it, all the way into it. But uh, you know, uh, you know when 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 life you know take you in certain directions, you know you might put the music to the back seat for a minute because you got an opportunity over here to make some bread or over here or whatever. But he still, you know, he still do his thing though. How much of that do you think is because it's all these like vultures out here that try to trick independent artists out, spending them, convincing them they need something and spending their money needlessly, and maybe that money could have been you know, applied to something else that might have made their career last longer. Oh, yeah, man. Because I, I know you, I know you've seen a gang of scams. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of that going on to this day. You know what I'm saying? Um, you just got to, you know, watch out for it. Like, a lot of people have, like, you know, uh, burned their whole budget, you know what I'm saying, dealing with people that really couldn't do what they said that they can do. And it was just, you know, uh, like you said, it was just a scam. And that and a lot of that will like discourage the artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, make them, you know, go in a different direction. Like, well, I don't even want to do this music no more. There's too many snakes in the game, or you know, it ain't taking me where I want it to go, and I'm spending too much money, and you know, vice versa. But you know, somebody like me, I've been sticking it out. I I don't even know how many years it's been now. So this is me, you know what I'm saying? No matter what, you know, so I'm out of here. You feel me? You, you you seem like you have a a, a calmer energy. You, you're more. Uh, I, I I I don't I don't know. You it just seems like 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 you're you're in a better place. Oh yeah, most definitely, man. Um, just mentally, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't have like a lot of people around me no more, so it's kind of like 
man, it, it's it's kind of more I could relax. Like when I was when I was dealing with a whole bunch of people and, and certain uh, crews and all that, it was a lot of stuff that was around that to where you just had to be aggressive. You know what I'm saying at all times because you didn't know what was gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? So, so I guess that's like a benefit of, of making music with your son. Like that that's got to be a, a nice relaxed atmosphere. Oh yeah, most definitely. Cause like I said, man, uh, you know. Uh, we 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 work well together. I mean, it's just, it's just like it's like organic. It's just real natural because you know what I'm saying. He been around me. He been living with me since he was five years old. You know what I'm saying. It was just me and him for a long time. So uh, you know, I can almost tell what he finna say. He can almost tell what I'm finna say. You know what I'm saying before we even get it out. So and and I already know you. You was probably talking to him like 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 a like like a man at, at an early age. Oh yeah, at, at five. You know what I'm saying? Like if it, 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 it probably wasn't no coochie coo shit. You know what I'm saying? No, not at all, man. Because you know, uh, I was like really like at that time, man. The, the, the stage that I was in, dog. I really I really shouldn't have been. Uh, a single father, but you know what I'm saying? It, it was the circumstances, so I had to be the one to step up. And uh, it was a lot of times, you know, he had to be around certain stuff and he had to understand what was going on. Young, you know what I'm saying? I always kept him safe, though, but I just wanted him to always know, you know what I'm saying, everything that was going on and understand from a young age so that when he get older, he know how to deal with anything, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's funny because, you know, I was going to say is, you know, a lot of people might 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 look down on that. But I, I was going to say flip the script, look at the beneficial sides of, of things of that nature. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, because, I, I mean, because, you know, a lot of times the people that say that, you know, they say that from their quote unquote ivory towers. And they don't know that, like, what you're referring to might might be the survival skills necessary in the situation that you're at. No doubt. That's exactly what it was. You know what I'm saying? To, to uh, Teaching them at a young age how to survive in any environment, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't really have a choice. Like it was like an all of a sudden thing. So I'm already, you know, uh, you know, moving a certain way. And then just all of a sudden, boom, you gotta take this responsibility on like in a split second. So it took me a while to transition and to get used to it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, over the years, it definitely changed me a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I think it, it benefited me a lot because I might have not, you know, lasted this long if I didn't have to take on that responsibility and start to change the way I move and the way I think. You might have took more reckless chances. Yeah, most definitely. What, 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 what are you afraid of as a father? Like, what are your fears? Like, I can tell you personally, uh, for some reason, I'm, I'm a punk on the injuries. I, I know it's not as serious for my kids as it is for yours, but I'm worried about the getting pulled over by the police. You know, them getting pulled over by the police. Uh, I worry about them getting in the car with, with motherfuckers that's too sloppy, drunk to drive, which is totally hypocritical because I did that shit on the regular for like 15 years. But Right, but, you know, hey, we changed and we started to realize, like, you know, what we was doing wasn't right. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's just... Uh, Right or wrong, that's just evolving. So stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's just evolving. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I do worry about uh, the police for sure. You know what I'm saying? That's for sure. It ain't nothing nice in Indiana, especially. Nah. I'm, I'm sure in Gary. Nah, nah, nowhere around here. I mean, I actually think, to be honest, I actually think uh, Gary is probably as as far as with the police, it's probably a better experience than Indianapolis. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, in Gary, you're going to get, definitely you're going to have, like, those those crooked cops or whatever. You're going to have uh, a lot of the, the county police and stuff hey, like I, that. Hey, I'm not hip to how big it is. is. Is, like, is do the cops know who you are from being a musician? Yeah. So, a lot of times, like, if it's the local cops, they, they kind of, you know, they kind of be cool with me. Because they know who I am, they know I do music uh, and gear, and, and you don't really be causing no ruckus. Exactly, you know what I'm saying. So, but but in Indianapolis, it's a whole different thing because it's like this is a real big metropolitan, you know, compared to being in Gary. So it's not really close knit where people just know exactly who you are, and then um, just by 
uh, I know I don't know, man. It's like a, a lot of people. It'd be more uh, police involved shootings now here than it do in Gary. You know what I'm saying? So. Well, what, what, what's, uh, I mean, outside of that, which obviously is the worst, what, what, which do you prefer living in? You said which city would I prefer living in? Yeah. Um, Man, I wish I could live in Gary, <laughs> to be honest, because I love my hometown, but it's not really that much opportunity there to just be there like that. You know what I'm saying? I go there as much as I can. You know, I help out, you know, my loved ones there, my friends there. And I do, you know, uh, I, we we uh, we got a few business uh, things that we got going on up there uh, to keep those ties going. But just to, to live there uh, every day, I don't know, man. I probably, I probably wouldn't, if I stayed there, I probably wouldn't have the opportunity to raise my son the way I did because- uh, Does it make you sad? Does it make you sad? I mean, sometimes it does, man. Like, but you know. like, like, like you know, I, I got cool with a lot of people from Gary, and, and you know, over the last ten years, a lot of them passed. As I'm sure you're well aware, you, I mean, you know him personally. I just know him from, you know, I was a publicist. For, I remember you, you referred some people to me that I did publicist work for. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and you know, a couple of them got. I mean, I don't know. It just, it just seems sad to me. I mean, it is, man, to, to be honest, man, just the whole the whole vibe of the city, you know what I'm saying? It just need a makeover, you feel me? Like, it's like when you get close to to the G, it's, it's like a dark cow is over, you know what I'm it's, saying? It, it's like it's like the dirty water shit, bro. Like, some, sometimes people talk about it and they'll do a little expose and maybe even a politician will campaign on this shit, but they'll never actually do anything. Right, to, they, to they don't do it. nothing. They never do nothing. They always uh, take all the money, uh, whatever government funding that we get, they always take it and pocket it. Or somebody end up in a scandal or something, man. Like, it's crazy. But, you know, it's home. And I'm always love home. I'm always rev home. And I'm always go there and, and kick it with my people as much as I can. You know what I I'm mean, saying? it's got a strong musical history. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Like, uh, people don't know, like, one of the first major record labels in the world was originating in Gary, Indiana. People don't know that. Like, that was when, before we were born. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, Sony ended up buying them out or something like that, but they had more money than Sony at one time. Uh, I, had to, uh, I can't remember the name of the record label right off the top of my head, but we definitely have... Uh, a, a rich music history. I don't know like how uh, the gap between like uh, generations where it was just like a long gap where nobody from Gary could really get a real, real buzz because um, it's, it's, it's just hella talent. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, man. Michael Jackson came from Gary, like right. the king of it all. So that lets you know right there, like it's, you know, he, if you think he, about that, it wasn't really no laps because then you got Janet Jackson taking up for like a little another decade past that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. I, I guess I could just say we had to struggle in the hip hop area. I, I, sure. I could say that. I could say that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, to get back to the MCGs, did, did you consider that shit horrorcore? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I consider that hardcore gangster rap. N not not hardcore horrorcore. You said who? Horrorcore. H o r r o r. I got that Maryland accent, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, that sounds like you said hardcore, but oh no, yeah, nah, it, was it was definitely hardcore. I can't I can't say that. I really it, don't it, know. It, it it gets rolled up like that sometimes, and I never found it to be as such neither. I just found it to be like, you know, like I think people that ain't really been in, 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 around poverty, they got assumption that it's like you know, like some ball and drug dealers, some pimps, but they don't understand it. it's really like mad different types of individual. And oh, I, think yeah. the, I think the MCGs were, were just different types of individuals that you'd encounter in those environments that weren't necessarily what, what, what fit into the cookie cutter mold of, of, you know, they have gangbang over here. They got wannabe drug kingpin over here. They got fake Italiano back. I mean, you, you know how it was. Yeah, for sure. 
I, I remember I remember going to uh, certain labels and stuff back in the day, and they was just like, man, y'all killing everybody in songs. Like we can't, it's it's it's, it's too crazy and. And I never could understand it because a lot of the stuff that they was pushing, I'm like, they talking about the same stuff we talking about. They just saying it in a different way. Uh, I don't know, you know, I guess it's just me from Gary and the, and the reputation of Gary that kind of like, you know, made them, made them more, you know, uh, cautious about dealing with, with us or whatever. I don't know, but we still did, you know, we still did good independent, so. Do, do, do you ever find it ironic that, that for the same thing that they that they told you it was too much of is like basically a prerequisite to make to have your music promoted by by these entities? Yeah, now, yeah, these days it's crazy. Like they they promote the violence like uh, real heavy now. Like it's like they almost instigate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you call you call. I've heard you refer to it as black genocide before, which is certainly true. But you know, I disagree yeah. with you on one point. You mm. you know you know how rap music spread throughout the world, right? Yeah, I I, I almost think it's poverty genocide because it does it doesn't seem to really matter what color the person is. You know, when they get exposed to nothing but music of that nature. You know, not like UGK, not like your music, not like Ghetto Boys. They're told about going to jail and shit. You know, they just think it's cool to have the stick and all that other shit. Right. You, you know, I mean, I think that's like an infection that spreads throughout the poor and, and you know, it fills right. up. It gives cheap cheap labor. You know, it yeah. started because like what I think happened was, the, you know, they intended to exploit the black community, right? Right. And then they were like, oh, we got some here. Yeah, and then it spread, you know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> Everybody, like, uh, all coaches, like, uh, gravitated to it. So it definitely, I definitely understand what you're saying. Um, like, maybe in the beginning it was maybe, like, mostly, you know, uh, black genocide, black people listening to it. But as the culture grew, it spread. Like, you know, now, I mean, you even see people that's in the suburbs, like, you know, trying to, you know, be a G with the stick, like, you know, they got two parent household, both parents making quarter million a year, and they still a, a, like a, a shirt of going to college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, leaving yeah. leaving without debt. Yeah. So and, and, and you know, these fools in some states they, they can go to Walmart and get like a semi automatic AK forty seven, you know. Like, oh, yeah. like, like, like for like like for hunting. Yeah, easily. I remember uh, uh, back when we was young in Indiana, you could go to Walmart and get and buy guns. <laughs> they didn't even really check nothing. You know what I'm saying? You go in there and buy guns, buy bullets. Like now, you don't even see that stuff in Walmart around here. Uh, you know, on social media, sometimes you get uh, a, a, a little deep with, with, you know, thoughts of these natures. Well, from the things you suspected when you were younger, what, what, what have you found to be proven true? I mean, I always suspected that it was an agenda. Uh, like a lot of stuff, it happens. Uh, yeah, we 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 make we uh, you know our actions and stuff that we do a lot of stuff and we make a lot of stuff happen. I don't want to bring but, any negativity into it, but a former associate of yours, um, you 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 were you were around when that person was around some uh, higher level industry figures and. Uh, you know, speaking of the devil coming in the suit, that they had some agendas to try to control the direction of the music that could be viewed as more genocidal, right? Yeah, 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 I definitely. Mean, I mean, think about the morality on that, especially something that they're going to invest their money in to get heard repeatedly on radio, heard to the point that it embeds itself in people's brain. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. That's fucked up shit. Yeah, it is, man, and it's all for you know profit, and it, and it forces it forces uh, most of the artists to to feel like that's that's the only way they can get in is by doing that type of music. Like, I mean, I I I, I thought that in the beginning, like everything had to be hardcore, uh, or they weren't they weren't gonna uh, even you know people weren't even gonna like the music or listen to it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? but in your defense, it wasn't like you got you was leaving the studio and going to the mansion. 
Yeah, true. I wasn't. <laughs> was leaving the studio going right back to the hood. Hey, shout out some people from Indiana that, that we might not be familiar with that's worth hearing their music. You said they doing what? Shout out some people from Indiana that we might not have heard of, you know, legends, new people that uh, it's worth it's worth hearing their music. Um, of course, um, uh, little Cappy. <laughs> oh yeah, got got to shout out little Cappy. First hey, that new Gunner on. video go hard. Oh man, that's what's up, man. Appreciate and, and, it. And y'all, y'all freestyle jump go hard too. Yeah, like like, no. like, 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 like the, the interplay was dope. Yeah, the test run, like we just we just actually man just. Had hooked up the studio equipment. And Man, y'all, y'all, y'all was like the Midwest locks on that with the uh, going back and forth every two lines and shit. Yo, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. But yeah, as far as uh, you know, artists and stuff like from the past, I had to give like some of my peers that help uh, you know, create the scene. I, I had to give some of them a shout out, like you know, uh, CCA, uh, uh, First Battalion, uh. Outside, uh, no taming. Uh, uh, man, it's it's so many of them, man. Uh, from back then, to be crazy, I just say shout out to everybody that was on the Gatekeepers uh, compilation back in the day. It, it still exists, so you can go look it up. And you can see all the artists that's on there. A lot of those guys was there from the beginning, and then like if you go with like some of the new guys, man, I had to like give a shout out to uh my homie uh D Brown. Um I wouldn't necessarily say he knew but I know D Brown, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say uh he's new he's been in it for a minute but he's what, still what what about Edge? Are you still cool with Edge? Well we uh I could say we we uh Bury the hat coach we coach you know what I'm saying? We cool. We see each other, whatever. You know, it's it's on good terms. I can say that. But as far as like like having a relationship or a dialogue, like on a regular basis, now nah, we're not we're not at that point. Are you still cool with the other cast from MCGs? Um, yeah, I talk I talk to uh, Mr. Low the most. Uh, I talk to Daz every blue moon, but yeah, we still in tune with each other. Yeah, y'all put a song out like two or three years ago, right? Mr. Lowe was on the record with uh, me and uh, EG from CCA. I uh, put him on the record. Uh, his brother, uh, C. Mack, he was still locked up doing federal time at, at the time. But he'd been released. Uh, this year he got released. So shout out to C. Mack. You know what I'm saying? He finally freed him. You know, I'm, I'm going to let you get out of here with this. Um, you know what? My, my bad. Uh, I, I, I did cap just a little bit. I, I do want I do I do want to hear a tiny little bit of negativity. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> nah, but it, it it ain't the usual shit. Who came to Indianapolis and didn't know how to act? As an artist. Yeah, because I, I, I I know you used to book shows and shit, and I, and I know some motherfuckers be way out of pocket. You mean a mainstream artist? No, I mean. I mean, I didn't book the show, but I could say uh, Juvenile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Juvenile came out here, dissed the DJ, told him this is city. I mean, straight punked the boy, man. I was like, wow. The, the DJ took it? Man, dude, the whole crowd took it, man. I couldn't believe it. Like, what? And was like, that the end of the show? Was there more songs? I, nah, he did some more records. Like, man. And, and was motherfuckers dancing and shit? And they were still rocking, dog. Like, wow. And, and he didn't been back. Like, he just came here, like, this month. Like, no, last month. Like, early November. And it was still, like, packed house. Like, I don't know. I, I don't get it because I was like, man, I don't know if that would have went down like that if we was in the G. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that, man. They probably would have mobbed the stage. All right, well, man, my fault, man. I, I, I w- one, one last thing. I guess I capped twice. Tell me what <laughs> you would do. Tell me what you would do in this situation. Mm-hmm. It's, it's New Year's Eve, nineteen ninety nine, right? Uh huh. And, and I got this ill ass white linen suit, and, and I go to a club that, that the clips at, and they performing grinding, and you know I got the little shit that got me up in the air. Like I, I had a lot of money then. It was before I went to prison, and uh-huh. uh, I. I had a little, I had a little table, and I, man, I'm telling you, here I had this like immaculate white linen suit, right? <laughs> I see, and, and, 
and so the, the clips come out, and and the, and the one motherfucker, the one that found God now, shake the shit out of a bottle of rose and just spray that shit all the fuck over me. And oh, and, 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 this, and this suit was like seven thousand dollars. Malice. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 like, and like it was a stage, you know? it, was, it wasn't like I could jump up and see him or anything, but I, I don't know. What, what what would you have done in that situation? I mean, man, I probably would have had to. I know I would have been pissed, man. I, I might have got put out the club trying to get up there, to be honest. And then if I couldn't get up there, like some type of way, I would have had to get in contact with Buddy. Like, hey, man, you owe me for my suit, because like, you got to pay me for my suit. <laughs> For real, it, 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 it was undry cleanable. Yeah, I can believe you. Like, man, dude, come on now. That's that's just like real disrespectful. And it's crazy that you said that, uh, because uh that actually like something like that kind of actually happened at a show. I didn't go, and thank God I didn't go. But somebody that we was with, they kind of like pushed somebody off the stage and like, you know how a fan come on the stage trying to rock or whatever, and they pushed him off the stage, and he flew into a, a VIP table and knocked their bottles over and stuff and knocked a drink all over them. And then they all started, to, before you knew it, the whole club was throwing bottles at the uh, stage. Hey, I mean, shit, are you on a time limit? Nah, nah, I'm good. Because this, this shit interesting as hell to me. You you know the, 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 there's the one topic I don't want to get into, but were, were were you around the CTE shit the uh fight? Because I remember Edge told me that when when there was the CT situation that they got in a fight with some Brick Squad people, and uh he he, he needed stitches in his head because like somebody snuck him with a bottle, and and he and he thought that it, it fell on Young Jeezy's shoulders to pay the hospital bill. Were you around for all that? I would like that's hey, that's that's crazy that you said that because that's the show that I'm talking about. I wasn't there, but from what they told me, it didn't it didn't have nothing to do with no brick squad. It was it was uh actually uh, the promoter, one of the promoters that came on the stage, but you know, uh the one guy, I don't even really like saying his name. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I guess I guess he was trying to prove like that he was really like a gangster to you know the cte right cte crew and he pushed the dude off the stage not even knowing that this dude was the promoter of the show right knocked him to the table knocked all the bottles over and then before they knew it the whole crowd was throwing bottles at the at the uh stage from the balcony and from the main floor so from from the the story that I got from Edge himself, he told me that one of the bottles like flew from the. the oh yeah, I probably, got, I probably got memory issue. That does sound like a, a little yeah. more. It's, he said one of the bottles flew from the balcony and hit him in the uh, head. And the reason why I didn't go to that show is because we had went to Miami with them for Memorial Day weekend prior to that, and it was just like a lot of funny movement that I didn't I didn't like. And uh, we ended up getting left outside of a club. And uh, it was like a big shootout out there. And we outside, you know what I'm saying? With CTE shirts on in Miami uh, at the time when he's beefing with Rick Ross. You know what I'm saying? So after that, I was like, you know what? And, and, and you personally don't give one single fuck about that shit. Nah, because I mean, it didn't benefit me either way. But it was just like, when we got to the club, you know what I'm saying? The night before we all got in the club, we all went in. But this night, for some reason, uh, they was talking about they had a cutoff. And they was saying that we had to pay X amount of money for everybody else to get in. And I'm like, man, hold on, man. We ain't finna do that because it's like, it's like 20 of us out here. And uh, most of these guys didn't really have no bread. So I wasn't finna pay for all that. And uh, we end, we just ended up, you know, being outside. And before you know it, it was like like two shootouts, uh, you know, happened like simultaneously. Like a few people got killed and everything. Like it was people running everywhere, chaos, police running up on you with flashlights and patting you down. Like the whole night, it was a crazy night. But the, the van that I was in got taped off in the murder scene, couldn't get it to the next day, all that. So when the next trip was to Orlando, 
to the BB King Club. And I was like, man, I'm staying at the crib. I'm cool on all that because they didn't care if we got shot. They didn't care what happened to us. They didn't even check on us. You know what I'm saying? They just left us outside. So, so that that, yeah. that that was what I originally wanted to ask. Did, did you feel that Young Jeezy had an obligation to pay the hospital bills? I mean, yeah. If you if you got people on the road with you and um, something like that happened, I feel like you know what I'm saying you should you know uh, just just as as a man, you know what I'm saying. Like all these people was here because of you, and then this person is not the person that caused you know what I'm saying all of this to happen. So, uh, you know, in hindsight, yeah, I think he should have. I, I think he, I, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think he did offer to pay and uh, um, Edge just didn't speak up all the way or something like that. So it didn't happen because I was like, dude, I'd have been at that, I'd have been at his room as soon as I came back from the hotel. I would have, I mean, from the hospital, I would have been at his room, at his door, like, hey, bro. Do you think the fact that you're so blunt has held you back? Being so blunt? Yeah. Oh, most definitely, man. Um, growing up, my mom always told me that, you know, sometimes I I, I say too much. And I can I kind of believe that kind of hindered me a little bit because people don't really know, like, how I'm going to react to certain situations and stuff. So, uh and then I and then I keep it and then like I said I keep it one hundred. So if it's stuff that's going on that I don't feel like it's right, I'm definitely gonna express myself about it. I'm not just gonna, you know, conform because you got to check or whatever. If it don't feel right to me, then I'm gonna speak up. You know what I'm saying? All right, man, I I can certainly dig it, brother. Um, before we get out of here, what what should people be looking for right now from you? Right now, man, like I said, man, go, uh, you know, stream that Like Father, Like Son, too. Uh, like you said, Cappy's uh, new video, Gunning, just dropped. You know, go check out all the videos. Like, we got hella videos that we dropped in 2020. So, you go check them all out. And like I said, be looking. Yeah, you know, I, I watched 20 of them jumps between, like, 5 and 8 o'clock. <laughs> so you had to do your homework a little bit, huh? I could dig it. Well, and I, I, you know, bro, I'm, I remember when Cappy was 12, bro. Remember, I, I was posting Cappy songs like way back in the day. I seen him come, come. Yeah. I'm not even gonna say full circle because the circle ain't begun to be all the way finished. You feel me? Right. But right. I, I watched him grow. It was like, it was never like, oh, isn't that cute? It, it was like, oh, he, he busting for however young he was. You know what I mean? Yeah. For with sure, appropriate sure. sub subject matter and shit, it wasn't uh, that, you know, trying to try force him to talk about, like, being in the trap and he, like, 10 and shit, you know? So I mean, like, to be know. honest, that's that's what he wanted to do, but I wouldn't let him. He it, was was right, always, it was the right choice. Yeah, he used to always come to me like, man, little Mouse, man, he say whatever he want to say. His parents don't care. And I'm like, man, you ain't little Mouse. And, I ain't, and uh, I'm your I'm your father. That, that's his parents. You know what I'm saying? But once he got to a certain age, I was like, man, you know what, man? Go ahead and do you. I ain't you know trying to saying? disrespect Lil Mouse, but he probably got more bigger views on his video now. Yeah, probably so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, shout, shout out to Lil, Lil Mouse, Mouse though. Though. Yeah, because he, he did his thing. Man. He definitely was an influence, you know what I'm saying, on, on Cappy. He used to watch him all the time back then, so, you know. Yes, sir. And, and where can they find you on social media? Man, uh... You just find me at Hit Screw Face on all social media, H I T S K R E W F A C E on all social media. Oh, yeah, I was about to spell it, bro. So many people be forgetting to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. You got to spell that screw face with a K S K R E W F A C E. You, um, you, you, you corrected me about that on a blog post one time. I'll never forget it and I'd never do it again. <laughs> yeah, 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 because I, I hate when people misspell my name. And um, As like, you should. I, I need to put it out there because sometimes I be getting flat because I use a K instead of a C. You know, got nothing to do, nothing against, you know, no Crips or nothing like that. Actually, when I tried to get the name, somebody already had it. And I was like, well, just put mine with a K because I'm not finna change it. You know what I'm saying? I can dig it. Yeah, so that's that's how that came about. All right. Well, thank you for your time, brother. And you have a All good right. night. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. No doubt. 100.